Welcome to Sheboygan County, working for you. My name's Adam Payne, and with me today is my co-host, fearless leader and friend, Dan Lemieux. Today marks the 30th program that Dan and I have co-hosted. Our objective was and continues to be to share with you the many programs and activities that Sheboygan County has to offer. Today is somewhat of a unique program because, again, my co-host is also our guest. And Dan, why don't you start a little bit telling us what your future plans are, although before that, a little background about yourself and where you grew up and, and what's new in your life. Well, what's new in our life is a little puppy. Uh, we got that about a month ago, and, and uh, we're back to having a baby in the house again, so we, we have a puppy. But um, I grew up in Oostburg, born and raised there. Uh, I published the local shopper in that uh, southeastern part of Sheboygan County for the last 20 years. Uh, that's what I do to make a living. Uh, the last 14 years, I have served on Sheboygan County Board for the district that covers Oostburg and, and part of Tonga Holland. Uh, serving the last 14 years on the board and the last uh, two terms or term and a half as county board chairman. So that's a little bit of my background. Um, the future, uh, there will be a change in, in my life and in my family's life uh, come January. I've been elected to the state assembly uh, representing parts of five counties, uh, Southern Sheboygan County and, and parts of uh, Ozaukee, Washington, Fond du Lac and Dodge counties. So. Uh, I've, I've expanded the number of people I represent, uh, the area I represent, and I'll be spending some time in Madison next year. So, so that'll be the change in my life. And that's exactly why Dan is our guest today. He resigned from the county board this week. He's gonna soon be moving into his state office. And today we wanted to talk a little bit about not only some of the accomplishments of the past, but uh, where we're headed for the future. Dan, why don't you share with our viewers, or at least remind our viewers, how long you were on the county board and some of the committees that you were active with? Like I said, I've been on the county board for 14 years. Uh, when I first got on the county board, uh, being a, a rookie, I, not knowing a lot about county government, I asked some questions and said, well, what, what about committee assignments? You know, what, should I, what should I try to get on? Well, I was told as, as a freshman county board supervisor, you pretty well get what, what's left over. But they said, if you volunteer for the personnel committee, you'll get your first choice because nobody wants to serve in a personnel committee. So I did that, uh, volunteered, or requested personnel committee. I served um, eight or 10 years on the personnel committee, uh, chaired that committee, uh, did a lot of work with the uh, negotiating contracts, uh, grievances, uh, benefits, things like that. And then I also spent a number of years on the finance committee, chaired that committee, uh, prior to serving as uh, vice chairman and then chairman. As chairman, you don't serve in any committees. You're uh, uh, ex official in all, all committees. So, uh, but th that's the area that I was involved in on the county board the most was personnel and uh, finance committees. So, as you look back and you reflect on those 14 years and the different committees that you served on, what do you see as some of the primary accomplishments or contributions that you made during that time? Well, on the personnel committee, I uh, I think back to the time where. We were starting to see some uh, uh, premium cost increase on our health insurance, and decided we and we had private uh, a care private carrier at the time, and we made the decision that we wanted to go self-insured, and I was part of the process to get us there was with with the number of unions that we have and, and union contracts which um, stipulate uh, benefits and health care coverage. Uh, it wasn't an easy move. Uh, it was a struggle for a couple of years to get to that point, but we are we went self-insured with a preferred provider and, and for a number of years saw no increases or decreases in our health insurance costs, which were very beneficial to the bottom line of our budget. Uh, now we're starting to, to see that increase again, so we need to look at, at that area again, but I think that was, that was a big area while serving on the, on the personnel committee was, was that changeover in, the, in that area of the benefits. On finance committee, I think some of the things that um, I mean, just in general, working on budgets and trying to maintain a flat or level uh, a mill rate. Uh, we've done some things in the last few years to uh, refine the budget process, which uh, as far as goal setting and accountability, uh, I've been a part of that, and, and I think we've come a long way in, in the budget process. As chairman, one of the things that, that I wanted to do was to get more discussion among all supervisors as to the where we were going as a county board, what are some of our goals were. And I started when I became chairman, uh, once a year we have a leadership forum where we all get together outside of the courthouse in, in, a, in a neutral setting 
um, for a number of hours, uh, sometimes a greater part of a day, and, and just talk about where we're going, um, have, have some discussion, have some input, and, and try to reach agreement on, on where we're going as a county board and county government. Uh, and I think that's been very instrumental in, in helping us uh, with the direction we are going. Uh, one of the other things that I've done in, in the last year and a half is uh, started heads of local government meetings with uh, top elected officials from all the towns, villages, and cities, and myself. And again, just to sit down in an informal setting and discuss some of the, the, the common concerns, common issues that, that we're all dealing with, and, and try to solve them together so that we don't all have to solve them ourselves, and try to share some services and, and opportunities with the different levels of government. And that's some, something that the state wants us to do down the road, uh, to, to share services and, and to uh, be more efficient in providing the services at the local level. I know when you're asked, well, what contributions or what accomplishments did you make? And, and certainly you shared some with us, but with the county board as a whole, it's a collective approach. And I Absolutely. think that was one of your, your greatest strengths was really pulling the board together. Uh, we also have a tax rate today that's less than it was 10 years ago. I, I, I think you could go on and on with a number of good things that you and the board as a whole did. You started to talk about some of the roles that you had as a county board chairman the last few years. You were unanimously reelected as chairman uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, what do you see as the primary roles and responsibilities of being a county board chairman? Well, obviously the, the chairman as, as the top elected official is a spokesperson for the county. Um, when, when somebody calls the county and, and wants, wants uh, to be, the county to be represented at a function, uh, my office is the office they call. And, and obviously, since we've had the position of administrative coordinator that you filled since we've had it, um, and we share that responsibility somewhat, and, uh, and that's good. I mean, we, we've, it's, a, it's a good sharing, and, and, and it lessens the, the uh, time commitment to the chairman a little bit because it's a part-time position. Uh, but it's, uh, you're, you're, the, you're the top spokesman for the county. And besides that, I, th I think the most important thing takes place the first two days you're chairman. That's setting up the committees. Um, Sheboygan County, as many counties are, are, are run, uh, for the most part, by, by committee work. And our county board meetings are, are, are shorter than most. That's because we have a strong committee structure. And in order to have a strong committee structure, you need strong committees. And it's the um, duty of the chairman to come forward with those committee assignments within 48 hours after he's elected as chairman. And, and that's probably uh, the toughest and most important job that the chairman has, is, is making sure that we maintain strong committees, uh, that the committees uh, are accountable to, to the executive committee and, and to the li liaison departments that they work with. So uh, that's very important. I think the, the other thing is, is just to, uh, to keep things running in an orderly way, uh, whether it be county board meetings or executive committee meetings. Um, uh, maybe be a calming effect when, when things get a little tense and keep, keep everybody um, focused in on, on the issue at hand instead of uh, letting the emotions uh, run away with the issues. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's not always the easiest thing, but, but try to be a, a calming effect and, and keep things going in an orderly way. Which we're going to continue to need more of in the state legislature as well. Yeah. As you look back over those 14 years, you talked about some of the accomplishments that you and the board have, have made. Uh, what do you see as some of the significant changes that have occurred during that time period? I think one of the, uh, well, a couple of the areas uh, are health care centers, uh, some big changes there over the years. Uh, it's a discussion that we've been having for years and years and years and will probably continue to have for years and years and years. But there has been a change in, in how Funding comes to healthcare, healthcare facilities, whether they be public or private. There's been a change in, in, in how the elderly are taken care of. Uh, when I first got on the county board, um, we had nursing homes. And, and they were, the elderly retired and went to a nursing home. Now, and, and stayed there for many years, uh, prior to becoming um, real sick or, or real dependent upon on nursing care. Now the people we have in our, our healthcare facilities uh, are there because they need nursing care, they need, uh, they need 
almost 24-hour care. And, and that's been a big change. And it's shown in the numbers of beds that we have in, in, in our recent consolidation. So that's been a big change. Another change has been in technology, uh, tremendous change in technology, and, and it continues to change uh, in, in, biz, in the business world and in the public sector. Um, we went through that um, right before uh, 2000 and, and since with, with our J.D. Edwards program and, and, and the technology we have now. I think we're, we're set now for, for a number of years, hopefully. And, but, but technology keeps on changing. So that, that has been a change. Um, probably the other change is, is uh, the, the concern right now over how services that the counties provide for the state are being funded and, and the future of that funding and who's going to provide those services, who's responsible for, for providing those services, not only at the county level but at the city and town level also. And, and that relationship between all these levels of government. I think that's a big concern right now. And, and it's been changing, and it'll continue to change. And that's a good segue to the next question. As you look ahead, uh, what do you see as some of the key challenges for county government? Uh, some of these changes are changes that I'll probably be involved with um, from the state, from, from the other side of the table now. Uh, shared revenues, obviously, are, are a big concern. Uh, almost $4 million worth of shared revenues every year. And uh, that, that number has stayed flat for the last about seven, eight years. And, um, and it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere you know, up, if anything, down in the, in the future. So that's a concern and a big budgetary concern. Um, IGT funding for our, our health care facilities is a, is a concern. And again, all these come back to budgeting. Um, the, the IGT money, if, if that goes away, we have, a, we have a, some serious concerns of how we're going to fund our health care facilities in the future. So I think that that whole relationship um, is, is going to be the biggest concern in the next few years. And earlier you also mentioned health insurance and, and the difficulty we're having yes. tackling that right now. I think a 29% increase for 2003. We saw a 17% increase for 2002. And, and because, because we're a service organization, uh, we, don't, we don't make a product, we don't, we're not manufacturing automobiles or anything like that, we're, we're, we're a service organization. So uh, what we have is a lot of employees. And as the, uh, as, as the wages go up, as the benefits go up, and the cost of benefits are, are increasing uh, much faster than the wages uh, in, in the private sector and the public sector, uh, that is going to be a concern. And uh, in order for us to maintain the level of employees we have, um, something has to happen because uh, we just can't continue to absorb those costs. We, we have uh, levy caps and, and things that we just can't do. Uh, we, we, we just, the money just won't be there to continue those increases the way they are. And as many of our viewers I'm sure know, we have 23 departments. We have nearly 1,300 employees. It's a, it's a good size organization providing a, a broad array of services and activities. This week, the county board elected a new county board chairman. And Supervisor Bill Gehring is going to be stepping in your sho shoes for the remainder of your term, maybe uh, re-elected for a second term. Uh, he he's likely going to be seeking some advice. What advice would you offer to our new chairman as well as leadership on the county board in general? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the, the next couple of years are because the money's going to be tight, both at the local level and at state level, uh, budgets are going to be hard. Um, I guess, you know, going back to what I had said before about um, the roles of the chairman, I think it's important that, that the new chairman and executive committee keep the committee strong. I think, I think they need to, to keep people on committees that are, that are willing to make the tough decisions, that are willing to, to set goals and, and, and stick to them. And, and so they need to, they need to maintain that, that strong committee structure and, and strong individuals on, on the different committees. I think as, as county government and also state government, we have to realize that we just can't keep everybody happy. Just we, we're, we're in a situation now where some people are not going to be happy with us uh, as we make these decisions, whether it be at the state level or at the, at the county level. And we have to realize that and, and just, you know, just bear in mind that you're just not going to be able to keep everybody happy. Uh, and then the last thing is, is to set goals. We, we, we have a budget process in place where we, where we set goals, where we, we um, 
we give the departments all goals. I think uh, the chairman and the executive committee and the finance committee in the, in the next couple of years, uh, it's very important that they, they set very specific goals and that they stick to them and, and, and don't compromise those goals or there's going to be problems. So, um, and, I, and I'm confident that the, the executive committee we have and, and, and Chairman Gehring, is, uh, they'll do a fine job of that. You know, I have confidence in that. Very good. Well, let's move on to the, the next chapter of your life. You uh, decided to run for the State Assembly in the 59th District this fall. You had a, a challenging primary with a number of folks uh, seeking the office. Uh, the final decision and election in November. Uh, why don't we start with why you, de why you decided to run for the State Assembly? Well, prior to May or June of this year, I had absolutely no intentions of ever running for state office. I was very happy running my business. I was very happy being county board chairman. Serving on the county board has been very fulfilling for me and it's been very rewarding. Uh, with the redistricting after the 2000 census, uh, in late May, the new districts came out and, and uh, southern Sheboygan County, uh, Oostburg, Cedar Grove, Random Lake areas, for the last 20 years had been uh, tacked on to either Ozaukee County or Washington County as, as the tail on a, on a bigger district and never really had enough population to be able to elect somebody from this area uh, to the State Assembly. With the redistricting, uh, we picked up four more townships in Southern Sheboygan County and, and made it obvious that somebody from Southern Sheboygan County could be elected to the State Assembly. Um, the, the 59th Assembly District where, where I'll be uh, representing was Glenn Grothman's district. And Glenn and I, I have known each other since, uh, well, since he was elected to the State Assembly about nine years ago. And we started looking around for somebody to, to run for that, that position from Southern Sheboygan County. And as we talked to people, uh, they kept on looking at me and said, well, why don't you run? Uh, so after, uh, after a few weeks of that and Glenn talking to me, um, I, I decided to throw my hat in the ring finding out that there were, uh, eventually that there were seven others that decided it was a good time to try to get in the assembly also. Um, but, but that's basically how the process came. I, I, I really had no intention of doing it. Uh, talking with people after the redistricting, uh, my name kept on coming up as I talked to people. We were looking for somebody else. And um, I decided that I would take the experience that I've had in, in county government and in the business and, and see if I could do something in Madison. And as we mentioned, uh, a challenging primary, a number of good people were, were seeking the position. You came out ahead, and then I think in November, you received almost 80% of the vote, did you not? I think it was closer to 70%. 70%, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, Dan, why don't you share with our viewers what, what strengths, what values, what experience that you feel that you can contribute to the state legislature? Well, again, I, I look back at 14 years of county government. Um, Many of the, the things that state government does locally are done through the counties. And I'm familiar with that. I, I'm familiar with the Health and Human Services area, uh, which is basically all state programs uh, that we're running. Uh, the court system, the district attorneys, uh, that whole area. I, I've been the last two and a half years in Madison dealing with IGT funding, uh, things like that. So I, I, I think I do bring some background in that relationship between state and local government. Uh, to the table when I go to Madison. Uh, also, being a small businessman, I'm, I'm concerned about the uh, tax structure in the state of Wisconsin and, and how tough it is for a small, uh, small business to operate and function and, and put up with not only the taxes, but the paperwork and bureaucracy that, that sometimes you have to put up with. And you don't have, a, you know, you don't have your, your staff attorney that you can throw that stuff at. You have to do it yourself. And so, so those are some of the areas that I, I think I bring to, to uh, state government. One thing you've uh, got to bring to the position is patience. Sure, uh, things I, happen incrementally. I, I think I, I think one of the, one of the, <clears throat> excuse me one of the other things that that I've learned in uh, in county government, uh, and especially being chair of a committee and and, and personal finance were, were two uh, tough committees, and also being chairman, is that you need to be a good listener. Uh, uh, I think I said uh, Tuesday night at my in my uh, resignation speech that uh, I found out that all my ideas aren't the, the best or the correct ideas, and you find that out by listening to people. And, and I found that out, that, that uh, you have to listen to both sides of an issue and, and then make your decision. And I, and I think I've, I've done that. Not everybody might agree with me uh, that, that I've always done that, but uh, I think I do. And um, 
the other thing is I, I think I have a, uh, a reputation both in, in, in my community and, and with my uh, county board work of being a person of, of, of integrity and ethical standards, which I think we need in Madison. I think we need to bring back some accountability and integrity to the institution of, of the legislature. And, um, and I'd like to be part of that. Uh, you, you often hear that <clears throat> in a session there can be anywhere from two to 3,000 bills, pieces of legislation that need to be reviewed and may or may not see the light of day. And sometimes people run for the state assembly because they have a very specific agenda or item that they want to address or something that's happened in their life. As you enter the state legislature, are there any areas or issues that you're particularly, particularly interested in? Well, like I said before, I, I, up until five months ago, I, I just, just this whole thought of, of, of serving in Madison wasn't even part of my, uh, my thought process. Uh, now that I now that I've won the primary, I've won the election. Now I have to you know now reality sinks in, and, and and I've been there a few times now to try to set up a staff in an office, and and uh, now what do I do? Well, um, in talking with leadership, Speaker Guard, and and some of the leadership, and talking about committee work and and my involvement there, uh, my request was in the areas of small business and the state and local government relationships, to, that they should use my experience in county government to help uh, better that relationship, which has deteriorated over the last 10, 15 years. And, uh, and they agreed, and uh, we, have, we don't have all the committee assignments yet as, as, we, as we're taping this, but uh, those are the areas uh, along with, um, I'm a very strong pro-life individual and I campaign that way, and uh, there are no committees that deal specifically with pro-life issues, but as, as some of those issues do arise, I, I'm sure I would get involved in those types of issues also. So, so those are the areas, small business, state and local government relationships, and uh, pro-life issues. Uh, those are the areas I'd like to concentrate on. Now, you, you just said at the time of this taping, the committee assignments haven't been confirmed yet, but how about your, your office? Do you know where you're moving into your new office? I was in Madison yesterday, and uh, there's 11 Republican freshmen and four Democrats. Uh, the, the 11 Republicans were there yesterday, and we had 11 offices we could choose from. We had to draw lots. I drew number two, so I got the second pick, and, and I do have an office picked out. Uh, I don't get anything yet until January 6th until we're sworn in because I don't have an office budget until that day. So we don't get the keys or anything until, until January 6th, but I do have an office picked out. Uh, I don't have a, a phone number or a address or anything like that yet. Um, back to the committee assignments, I did have, I did have one, um, found out yesterday that I, one, one of my committee assignments is uh, the Committee of Urban and Local Affairs, and that does deal with state and local relationships. And I was told that I would, uh, uh, actually I, I was told that I would be vice chair of that committee yesterday, so that that would be one of the committees that I'll be on. Very good. And, and, and it sounds like there will be like four committee assignments per, per representative, and I, I don't have a clue what the other ones are yet. So with all of this coming at you fast and furious, what's your <clears throat> general impression thus far as you're being orientated to your new responsibilities? Well, right now, uh, I think a lot of it is, is just standing back and, and, and you're sort of in awe of the institution. Um, you go into the Republican caucus room, and you realize that a lot of, of major decisions are made there over the years in caucus, and then you bring them to the, the floor. Uh, I haven't spent, been in, I haven't been in the chambers yet. Um, I'm sure that's going to be even more awe-inspiring to, to sit there and, and be a part of that. Uh, I think the, the half a dozen times that I've been to Madison since the election, as I drive down Washington Avenue towards the Capitol, and you just, you see the Capitol in the distance and the dome, you know, it, it, it's a humbling experience to think that that this guy from Oostburg is now going to be representing, you know, one 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 hundredth of the state, uh, making decisions and running the state. And right now, it's a humbling experience and 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 one that I look forward to. Well, I couldn't let you go without asking you one <laughs> tough question. And I know we only have a few minutes remaining, but shared revenue has been a topic that you and I have been discussing for the last couple of years, pretty pretty frequently and you're now going to be in a position to make a difference and to vote on what happens with right. shared revenue statewide. What's your present position if you have one formed in regards to state sh shared revenue and maintaining the levels for counties and municipalities or 
uh, whether or not there's going to be any changes. Well, again, you asked me if, if you could keep that question on the list. That's for sure, absolutely. <laughs> keep it on the list. Um, I haven't been involved, obviously, as, as a freshman in any of the discussions that, that have started on the budget process. One of the things, and, and, and everybody that's, that's been elected has said, we're not going to raise taxes. In order to raise taxes, we have to make cuts. Uh, I made no promises when I campaigned, and I, and I signed no pledges. But I, I think one of the things, at a very minimum, I think we need to see a freeze in, 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 the, in the spending where it is now. And that's a start. Whatever cuts that are made, I would like to see made be consistent. And I would like to see everything on the table, and that includes shared revenues. It also includes the university system. It also includes uh, corrections and, and some of the other areas that are, that, are, that are some of the bigger ticket items in the budget. Um, and I think, I, I think we have to be realistic and, and realize that, that for the next few years, until the economy improves, uh, there probably will be some cuts. Uh, my goal is to keep those cuts at a minimum and be consistent with cuts in, in other areas of the state budget so that they're not penalizing local governments and trying to shift uh, the burden of the tax to, to the local governments, but, but try to be consistent. Very good. So, but, I, but to think that they're going to stay exactly where they are and increase, um, I don't think that's going to happen. Well, do you have any parting remarks today for your vast TV8 viewers out there in <laughs> Sheboygan County and in the land? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure co-hosting this program with Dan for the last few years, and I'm certainly, on a personal note, going to miss working with him as county board chairman. I think he leaves Sheboygan County in good hands. I think the state legislature is very fortunate to have someone with his background and his experience going to be working for the constituents here. And uh, I hope that you will continue to join us in the future. Our new county board chairman, Bill Gehring, may or may not be here next month. He was just elected this week, so he as well is being orientated and has a number of decisions to make. But thank you for joining us, and happy holidays.